All right, so we're now moving on to the next uh, video, which is gonna be unit 3i, and it's just gonna be comparing rational numbers. So this word, or these words, rational numbers, may be new to you. And if they are, we're gonna talk about what, they, um, what rational numbers mean and how we can represent them. And our learning objectives for today and what you're going to hopefully accomplish in this video is to one, know what rational numbers are. So what is a rational number? And how do we know that it is a rational number? Uh, know how to plot rational numbers, so knowing how to plot them on a number line, and then also how to compare rational numbers, meaning is a, is a rational number less than or is it greater than to another rational number? All right, we have learned uh, about whole numbers already, and we have learned about integers. All right, these are all different types um, of number sets that we have. So remember, whole numbers, it's going to be uh, our 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, only positive. And our integers are all of their whole numbers and their opposites, so negative uh, and negative infinity to positive infinity. So negative uh, 4, 5, uh, but negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's all of our um, whole numbers plus all of their opposites. All right, um, so we've learned all that, and now the next thing that we're going to talk about is the number set of rational numbers. All right, so what is a rational number? Well, integers, fractions, and decimals make up a set of rational numbers. So that means if the number is an integer, it is a rational number. If the number is a fraction, one half, it is a rational number. If it's a decimal, 0 0.5, it is a rational number. Um, as long as if, our decimals are repeating, meaning the example 0 0.33 where the three is repeating, or it ends, meaning the example 0 0.5. Uh, those are rational numbers. If the decimal does not end or it does not repeat, like for instance, pi, pi is a non-ending, non-repeating decimal, uh, then it is not rational and it is called irrational, but you won't learn about that this year, right? So when we're looking at this, it's integers, something that we've already learned this year, fractions, um, and then any decimal that is either repeating or it ends is a rational number, all right? And a rational number, one of the main definitions that you're going to see is it can be written as a fraction A over B, where b cannot be equal to zero. And think about why can b not equal to zero? Because we can never divide by zero. This is undefined. So this is not valid. So it's a over b, where b cannot equal zero, right? That is why it needs to be repeating or it needs to end because if it is a non-repeating or non-terminating or the decimal does not end like pi, uh, then it can't be expressed as a fraction. So that's why it needs to be repeating or it needs to end. So it's not that every decimal makes up a rational number. It is just that the decimal must repeat or it must end, and then it can make sure that it is part of the rational number set. All right, we are going to go through different examples of rational numbers and plotting their opposites and the rational number itself, uh, and then also comparing them whether one is greater than or less than the other. All right, so let's go through some examples. So if you're asked to graph the number 3 fourths and its opposite, what you should be doing is asking yourselves, all right, when I put these tick marks, what should I count by? If I try to count by one, two, three, four, it's not really going to allow for me to plot this number very easily. So if we're asked to graph these fractions, what we should be doing is think about how can I list my number line to make it easier for me to graph. So instead of counting by ones, I can count by one fourth. So this first tick mark will be one fourth. The second tick mark will be two fourths, but another way that we should write this two fourths is one half. So we will then rewrite this as one half. The next one will be three fourths. The next one will be four over four, but how do we represent four over four? Well, four divided by four is one, so we can represent this as one. And then the next one will be one and one fourth, or you could have wrote it as five over fourth if you would like. And then the opposite direction will be the exact same way. It will be negative one fourth, negative one half, negative three fourths, negative one and negative one and one fourth. All right. The key thing is to make sure why this is written as one half and not two fourths and why this is written as one and not four over four. Because with every fraction, we never leave them unsimplified. 
All right. So we can just make it easier for us just to count by that one over four. But if it goes to be two over four or four over four, we must reduce it into a uh, fraction uh, that is its simplest form. All right. Now we can plot these. It's nice and easy. We're finding three over four. Well, here's one over four, two over four. Here's three over four. It's nice and easy for me to plot. And if we're going to plot its opposite, we know it's the same distance away from that zero. So it's three tick marks away, which is negative three over four, because we have one, two, three fourths away. Here we have one, two, three fourths away as well. So its opposite is negative three over four. As we've already talked about, the opposite of the number is just simply taking the opposite sign. If it was positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. But in both of these cases, they're both the exact same space away from zero. All right, the next number that they're asking you to do the same thing is plot this number and its opposite is negative 1.6. Right? Remember, when we're drawing our number line, we can count in any way that we want. It wouldn't be smart to count by ones in this case, though, because where do we plot that 1.6? We want to make sure that we're able to accurately plot this point, which is also why we wouldn't really necessarily plot by 0 0.5 either, um, because we want to make sure we're plotting this point. Um, I decided to count by point twos. You could have changed it and made a point fours and you would still be able to. Um, but I'm counting by point twos. So I'm first plotting this negative 1.6. Well, here is my point at negative 1.6. All right. I know that it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tick marks away from my zero. And as long as if my tick marks are being consistent, then I know I can move eight tick marks in the other direction and it will also be plot at its opposite. Or as we've already talked about, if it's negative, it's opposite to simply turns positive to 1.6 because we know it is the same distance away from zero. Right, I wanted to go over this one really quick just because even if it's written as a um, mixed number, you could rewrite it as an improper if you like to. So you could rewrite this as five over two and if you wanted to graph that you perfectly could. Or we can leave it as a mixed number and we can just go ahead and uh, write our whole numbers one, two, three, four negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And since we're counting by halves, I know if I put this tick mark in between, it's counting as negative 1.5, negative 2.5, negative 3.5, uh, 0.5, 1.5, and so on. Uh, if it was two and one third, instead of just putting one tick mark here, I could put these two, and then this would also be counting by thirds instead. So you don't have to necessarily label every single tick mark that you do. Um, any reader would understand that this means it is 0.5. So if I'm plotting 2.5, I know that this is two and one half, and then that just means I'm also going to plot its opposite, which is negative two one and one half, or I can count the tick marks that I made as well. Just remember that it's got to be equidistance or the same distance away from zero. All right, now we're going to get into comparing them, and when we compare, I might have, I'm going to draw a number line, but it's not something that you have to do because we can logically think about comparing them as well. All right, so if I'm just asked to compare these, what I'm ultimately asking you to do when you're comparing is to decide which one is greater than or less than the other. All right, so this is what you're trying to do when you're comparing. Now, you could graph these if you wanted to. And if I wanted to, um, I know that 1 half is the same as negative 2 over 4. So I can count as 0, 1, negative 1 over 4, uh, negative 1 half, uh, negative 3 over 4, and negative 1. And I can plot the points here. Well, I have negative one half and I have negative three over four. Since negative one half is closer to zero, that means it is greater than uh, negative three over four. So I can compare this by negative one half is greater than negative three over four. All right. So one way you can do this is you can graph it, plot it, and see which one is greater than. Remember, if it's to the right of it, that means it's greater than. If it's to the left, that means it's less than. The other way I can do this is here, I see that in both of these examples, it's negative four. So since they're both starting with the same whole number, uh, that's not telling me which one's greater or less than yet. If it was negative four and five, six, and negative three and one, six, right away I know that this is greater because negative three is closer to zero than negative four. So when they're the same, all I need to do is think about these fractions and just think about which one is going to be closer to zero. Well, if this is negative four, it will be one, negative four, and one, six. And negative four and five, six isn't going to appear until after it. So I don't have to plot them. I can logically think about it and say, well, this is actually closer to negative four. This is closer to negative five. And since I know negative four is greater than negative five, uh, that is telling me that this one is, has to be greater. So I can logically think about this 
So negative four and one six is greater than negative four and five six, or I can actually plot them. So this will be two, six, three, six, four, six, and five, six. And I know that this here is to the right of it, which then means it's greater than, All right? Whichever way you wanna do this is perfectly fine by me. Okay, when I'm comparing these, hopefully this jumps out at you. Um, but if it doesn't, it's perfectly fine. I can plot these points, negative four to negative three, and then in between, rather than putting each of the, what the tick marks represent, since I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the tenth one is negative four, that means that each one must be counted by point one. So I don't need to write it, but this will be negative 3.1, negative 3.2, and so on. Right. And if I'm logically thinking about this, negative 3.08 is awfully close to this negative 3. Negative 3.8 is awfully close to negative 4. So since this one is closer to negative 3, which I know is greater than negative 4, I know that this one also is going to be greater. Or I can plot the points. Negative 3.08, since I am just approximating this, I'm just using this to determine which one is greater. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just know it's going to be close to this negative 3.1. And negative 3.8 will be all the way out here. Well, which one's to the right? Well, this negative 3.08 is to the right, so that means that this must be greater than negative 3.8. Right? Because we can think that this is moving, it's closer to zero or closer to that negative three than this one is here. All right, just two more examples and then we're finished. All right, so for this first one, I wouldn't expect you to graph this because if we're just saying which one is going to be greater, well, this is negative and this is positive. Well, positive is always going to be greater than negative. So I don't even have to do this one. So please logically think about this. Don't go ahead and plot these every single time. All right? Then I'm just going to plot these really quick. I have negative six. I have negative seven. I can count by whatever ones I want since I see that they're going by 0.25. I'm just going to do negative 6.25, negative 6.5, and negative 6.75. You can write them if you need to. You don't have to write it if you don't want to. Um, you can just write the tick marks and not actually write the numbers, right? And since negative 6.5 is to the right of this negative 6.75, we know that this means it is going to be um, greater than. So that means that here, negative 6.5 is greater than negative 6.75, right? We could always also look at these and think about these as um, positive numbers. And forget, since they're both negative 6 to begin with, I can just compare 0.5 and 0 0.75, right? And if you can compare these, well, I know that, um, sorry, I know that 0 0.75 is greater than 0 0.5, but when we move to the negative, we know that it's going to be reversed because as we talked about, the numbers that are actually further away from zero and positive are still further away from zero and negative, and that means that they're further to the left or they're further negative. So we can just go ahead and think about them as well as positive decimals, and then how do we translate that into negative? Um, we just know that when it's a smaller number, it's actually closer to zero, which means it's greater than when it's in, in a negative. All right, so that is um, it for this video. Um, if this is confusing, it's just going to get easier after we practice it. All right, so we're going to practice this a little bit, and hopefully it gets easier after practicing.